Hey guys, how's everyone? So, I have gone ahead and created two tutorials so far, and this is going to be the third. And based on the feedback I've gotten, I decided that I'm going to keep doing this. And I plan in the near future to do an entire RPG tutorial set that it's going to be easy and fun for everyone to, you know, get involved with. But before I do that, I feel like an RPG style game might be a bit too advanced. Um, so what I plan to do is do a simple shooter game, like a space style shooter game, like if you ever played uh, Galaga. Uh, you know, because if you understand how that game works, then that's a base fundamental for building an RPG. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start the tutorial series with building a sh uh, space shooter game. And what that's going to involve is uh, basically we're going to have our we're going to have our space we're going to have our space shooter. We're going to have the prefab of the bullet coming out like the laser. Um, we're going to go over keeping score, uh, saving and loading, high scores, and by the time we're done with the project, you'll have a full-fledged uh, game. As far as the artwork and texture that we're going to use, um, it's just going to be simple images that I've pulled off Google, and I'll upload every image that I use uh, throughout the tutorial. So what we're going to do first is go ahead and just open up a new Unity project. And if you'll notice, um, I have a new layout from my other tutorial videos, and I'm actually sticking to this now because it's, in my opinion, it's easier to navigate. But I have my hierarchy here, my inspector, and my project down here. Uh, and then I have my both game views. It's just easier for my eyes. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create our spaceship. So to do this, let's go ahead and just create a game object. Go to create other. Go to cube. Okay. And let's just position it at... Zero, zero, zero. Okay. Okay. And then to find your cube, just, you know, you click on your cube, hit F, and that focuses in on it. So here's our cube. And we're going to call this, uh, let's call this player. All right, it's going to be our player, which is going to be the spaceship. So, what we want to do is create a spaceship to where it's going to be able to move back and forth. Sorry, wrong one. You're going to move it back and forth. And then we're going to have it to where, say, you hit the space bar. It's going to shoot out lasers. So in order to do this, we have to script it all. And we add scripts to the object. So my tutorial series, they're all going to be C-sharp scripts. Um, it's just what I'm comfortable with, and it's what everyone should be comfortable with, I believe. So what we want to do is let's just create a simple movement uh, left and right for it. And if you followed my first tutorial on movement, you understand how this works. Uh, in case you're just skipping ahead and watching this series, let me show you what you can do. Head down to your project folder, go and create a new folder, and call it scenes. I'm sorry, scripts. Go and open that up. And then once in there, go ahead and create a C sharp script. And let's name it. You can name it, I'm, I'm going to name my player, because it's going to be the movement and the actions of our C-sharp script, of our, of our, of our cube, or spaceship. Alrighty. So go ahead and open that up in Mono Develop. And throughout the tutorial, we're also going to make a menu screen uh, using GUI interfaces, as well as a application.level. So... I'll explain everything like that as well, and so you'll be you'll be good to go. And give me just a second. Open up your new mono develop screens. Bugging out for a sec. Mm, give me just a sec. Okay. All right, guys. So open up mono develop in your new scene. And you should have your player script. And wow, it's being really slow. Okay, perfect. All right, guys. So here we go. We have our public class player, which inherits from monitor behavior, and then we have our start method and our update method. So the first thing we should probably do is we know that we're gonna want our character object to move left and right. Right? It's a space shooter game. We want it to move left and right. We don't want them to go up. I don't believe, at least not yet. So we're just gonna do left and right. We're gonna have them shoot out of the space bar. And we want him to be at the bottom of the screen. So this is where we're going to want him to start, right here. So I'm going to set it to negative 3. Negative 3. 
and negative one for the z. That's gonna be our starting position. So let's head back to mono develop and let's start our position. So what's our starting point for this game? All right, this is gonna be our spawn point. If you watch the first tutorial series, you should already know how to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our game object start at XYZ when the game is start. So inside the start method, we're going to set our spawn point. So we're going to do game object, which remember is transform. And actually, before we do this, we're going to use transform quite a bit. Let me show you how you can cache transform. So right now what happens, especially when you use it in the update, uh, when you put transform dot in the update, Every frame, it runs through transform and looks up all the material that it has to use. So how do we make it to where it saves processor time and just calls it once? Let's go up to here, and let's make a new variable, and we're going to call it public. And I noticed in one of the comments, someone mentioned the difference between public and private. Public means that it's accessed, uh, other files can access it, and you'll see it on the Unity editor. Private means it remains in this file alone. And actually, this is going to be a private one because it's just going to cache our uh, transform method. So go ahead and create a private variable, private, and then we're going to call it uh, transform, say transform, capital T, and then you can name it whatever you want. This is just going to name it so that whenever we look up transform, we can use this name. And I'm going to use my transform. Right, it's pretty much the standard. So now what you're thinking, so now what, what does that do? Basically this is telling us that we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna be able to call something called my transform that's gonna basically look up transform. And that's our transform method for moving positions and player and all that. So now we need to declare what my transform is because we haven't done anything yet. So if you ever just see this, you still have to do more. So let's head down to our start method. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to do my transform equals transform. Okay? So what this says is that whenever my transform is typed out, it's going to equal transform. So now you'll see that if I do my transform, I can do dot, and here's all my transforms. And the best part is, is that when my game runs through this, it's not updating its transform every frame. Instead, it's just pulling it from the cache. So we don't have to, it basically will save system resources. So now let's move on to our spawn point. And I'm going to create a lot of comments throughout here, guys, because that's how you learn. You learn by typing out what you want to do before you do it. So we, we want our spawn point, and we want position to be at negative 3, negative 3, and negative 1. I think that's what I said. Negative 3, negative 3, negative 1. Okay, awesome. And this here is our x, our y, and our z. So if you watch the first tutorial, you should already know how to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do my transform dot position. Okay, so we're going to do game objects position, and we're going to equal uh, the new line of where we want to start. And we know that position is vector three, so we're going to do a new vector three equals new vector three. Sorry, my mono develop is lagging today. A uh, new vector three. And then we're going to do a float x, float y, and float 0. So new vector 3, and we want it to be negative 3 for x, negative 3 for y, and negative 1 for z. I'm just going to do that. So let's go ahead and test it. Go ahead and save it. Add your player script to your player. Go ahead and click it. Make sure it's there. Okay. Let's go ahead and just uh, to test it, let's move my cube up here and hit play. All right, and there you go. All right, it moves back down. Let me just get out of the game view on maximize so you can see it. You hit play, and it goes down there to our spawn point. Now, if you want to even that out, because it's not really even on my screen, feel free to. So the next thing we want to do is we want oh, our player to move left and right. So here's what we have to do. And again, if you watch the first tutorial, you should already know how to do this. Uh, we're going to head down to our update, and we want our player to move left and right. Move the player left and right. Move the player left and right. We also want to set a player speed. So in order to do that, we need to declare another variable. So head up to here under private transform. And let's create a new variable. Um, a variable is basically just declaring an integer. So we're going to say public int. Uh, say you want a speed of 5. Okay, public int. Oh, I'm sorry. you got to name this integer. So we're going to name the variable player 
speed, and then we're going to set it equal to 5. Okay, so here's what we have so far. We cached our transform so that the system doesn't have to call it every, every update. We declared our player speed, which is going to be 5, and then we declared the starting point, which is the, I'm sorry, this is declaring the transform, and then we declared our starting position, which is going to be um, on the game line, negative 3, negative 3, negative 1. So let's head down to our void update, and what do we want to do? We want to move the player left and right. So you should have already watched my first tutorial series, like I said, and you should already know how to do this. And the way we do this is by using the input manager. And if you don't know what the input manager is, you need to go back and watch the first video. So what we want to do is we want to move the player left and right. So we want to make a game object move left and right. So it's going to start off with transform. I'm sorry, don't do transform, do my transform, I cached it. And then we want to tr move it, right? So we're going to do translate, transform.translate, and we have a vector3 position. So I'm going to transform.translate, vector3, dot, remember what we do to move left and right? Right. Okay. So if we go ahead and save this, what's going to happen is it should just go off the screen to the right. Yep. All right, guys, and let me just give you a heads up here. So, say you know you want to move the player left and right, but you didn't know how to do this. Like I said, if you watched the first tutorial, you can look up how to how to use a vector three. You know, vector three is a position. Right is positive one and negative one, negative one for left. Translate is to move, and my transform is our game object. So we want our game object to move across this position to the right. That's what that says. Okay, so we have that. Now we want to be able to control it. So we're vector three dot right, and then we're gonna times it. And what times does is I, I there was a comment where I didn't explain this well enough. The way I look at times is when you times it, it's basically doing it all together. So think of it like this: if you have a plus sign, it's gonna do this and then this, and then oh, I'm sorry, you know that was a terrible example, guys. <laughs> Apologize. What you're gonna do is you're going to look at it as a times thing. So you have vector 3 dot right. We want it to dot right. And then we also, at the same time, timesing is like at the same time. So at the same time, we want to use player speed of 5. So in real time, meaning that at the same time, we want all these actions to take place at the same time. Everything comes together and works together. All right, Everything's going to be processed at the same time. There's not going to be separate ands and plus signs. Everything happens at once. So my transform dot translate vector three dot right. I mean, what do we want to do? We know we have a player speed of five, so we should probably add that in there. So times it by our player speed. So right now we have it. it's going to move to the right and our player speed at the same time. And then we also need to get the function of pressing the left and arrow keys. So we want to go to our input manager, and then you'll look down here, and we have get access and get access raw. And we already know we're familiar with get access, so let's go ahead and do that. And when you open the parentheses, it's going to say string access name. Well, horizontal is left to right, so let's just type in horizontal. And don't forget to string it. String means quotes. Input dot access horizontal. Okay, we have that, and then we're going to times it again, because if we just save it now, we can have control, but the player is going to move just off the screen. It's going to be very fast, so we want to slow it down to where it's real time. And like I said, real time is just time dot delta time and go ahead and close your parenthesis there and yes okay let's go ahead and save that check the console make sure there's no errors okay all right cool and now we're moving our player and if it's too slow for you if you go over to the player and you go to the inspector view uh, you'll see here player speed we can actually control the player speed now and if I set it to 13, it's much faster. And let's set it to uh, 20. There you go. So you can always, you know, you can mess around with it. Uh, just so you know, if you mess around it here, it won't save. So it's set to 20. It's strictly for testing purposes. So as soon as I hit play again, there it goes. My player speed is set back to 5. So I'm going to conclude this video here. This is how we got our simple space starter. We have our starting point and we have our left right positions. The next video will go into uh, having 
having it fire like a laser and creating the prefab for it. And I'll go into that. So thanks for watching and go ahead and click on the next one. Thank you.